Simple stories are boring. That's why I love the complexity of Magic the Gathering storylines. Many possible meanings can be found within the story and its characters. Today, I'm going to analyze the conflict between Garrick and Liliana. Let's start with a brief overview. Garrick versus Liliana. Who should win in the end? Liliana Vess was once an immortal planeswalker with demigod-like powers. But after the mending of the multiverse, she was mortal once again. Because of this, Liliana sold her soul to four demons in exchange for greater power and longevity. In debt to demons, Liliana was sent to the plane of Chandelar to retrieve an artifact of immeasurable power, the Chain Veil. While there, she was attacked by a beast killed it, and in so doing, incurred the wrath of another planeswalker, Garrick Wildspeaker. Garrick attacked Liliana in revenge for killing his beast, and though he very nearly killed her, she was able to use the power of the Chain Veil to save herself, cursing Garrick in the process. Now Garrick chases Liliana across the multiverse, seeking a cure for the curse of the Chain Veil that she placed upon him. The curse claims more and more of Garrick's mind and soul each day, twisting him into an entity of primal evil and revenge. The Chain Veil lays its tendrils upon its wielder as well, eating away at Liliana more and more each time she uses it. Liliana seeks to use the Chain Veil's power to slay her demon masters. And Garrick seeks for her to free him from its spell, or slay her in revenge should she refuse him. So who should win in the end? What's great about complex storytelling is there is no clear answer to this question, but rather many possible answers depending upon your interpretations as reader. My own analysis follows, but what I want to stress is one thing. My interpretation is my own. I am not saying this is the meaning of the storyline, but rather it is one possible meaning of many, the meaning that I see. I will offer evidence of my claims so that even if you do disagree with those claims, you can see where in the text I drew my interpretations from. Let's begin with intent as it relates to culpability. From Liliana's perspective, her killing of Garrick's beast was purely self-defense. She did not kill it for pleasure, nor to serve her own agenda. She also did not initiate the fight. The beast tracked her down, attacked her as though she were prey, and Liliana defended herself. Now let's look at Garrick's perspective. He sets his beasts loose on Chandelar to aid him in his hunt of a giant predatory beast known as the Ursoth. From Garrick's perspective, during this hunt of the Great Predator, one of his beasts attacks another without provocation and is slain in the process. He then reasons that the correct response to this is to slay the one who killed his beast. So Garrick's motivation is revenge, in this case revenge upon another who acted in self-defense. Garrick finds Liliana and attacks her with lethal intent. Again, Liliana acts in self-defense, using her powers to fend off the hunter. She initially loses the fight and is about to be done away with by Garrick when she uses the chain veil to save herself, cursing him in the process. So, the real question in regards to intent is, whose intentions are more sympathetic? For me, I have complete sympathy for Liliana in this situation. Had she not killed the beast, it would have killed her. Had she not used the veil against Garrick, he would have killed her. Also note that when Liliana has defeated Garrick, she does not kill him, despite the fact he is incapacitated and she could easily have done so. She leaves Chandelar and lets Garrick live. So, I'm going to have to place full culpability for this conflict on Garrick and side with Liliana. She acted entirely in self-defense, and her business and purpose on Chandelar in no way involved Garrick or his beasts. But to look at that further, we must delve into 
motivation. Why is Liliana on Chandelar in the first place? As I said in the summary of the storyline, she has been tasked with retrieving the chain veil for one of her four demon masters. But let's look a little closer at this. Going back, way back to Liliana before even her spark ignited, she was a young woman looked down upon by those around her. Her father was a respected lord and general, yet his daughter Liliana was viewed as a disgrace to this proud family. Be it the ways in which she conducted herself, spoke freely, or because of her sexual relationships with others, Liliana was mocked and looked down upon for not conforming to the social expectations placed upon her. Through it all, she refused to be anything other than herself. She refused to change who she was, and this is what defined her. It was also what made her look down upon in everyone else's eyes, even those of her own family, except, of course, for her brother. When her brother took sick, Liliana was tasked with retrieving the roots of the Isis tree, which were needed to heal him, but the grove in which these rare trees grew had been burned to the ground. Liliana despaired, for she loved her brother deeply, and that is when she met a mysterious stranger who gave her a potion, which he promised would cure her brother. Desperate to save her brother, Liliana used this potion but discovered she had been tricked. Her brother was brought back to the world, but as a nightmarish creature of the undead. Liliana had not known this potion would curse her brother in this way. She had acted entirely out of love and a desire to save her brother, but her family blamed her. The people in her life shunned her, and she was then cast out and banished. This backstory is integral to understanding Liliana. Later, when she was on the edge of death herself after losing her demigod-like powers and becoming mortal once again, she traded away her soul, her freedom, and rights of independence to preserve her life. Liliana's conflict to free herself from the debt to her demon masters is one in which she is fighting to regain herself. That which she had always been mocked and hated for, her freedom of self, is what she ultimately gave up in order to survive, and now seeks to reclaim at any cost. This was Liliana's ultimate motivation on Chandelar. Through serving her debt to demons, she sought a way to free herself from it. Her methods may indeed be cruel or downright evil, but her motivation for these actions is one I can give reasonable sympathy towards. So why was Garrick on Chandelar in the first place? Why is Garrick hunting this predator? Because his philosophy is one that believes in the glory of the hunt and that one should strive to be top predator. Garrick is a hunter to the core, a planeswalking predator whose hunting ground is the entire multiverse. Gripped with a need to test his might and resolve against greater and greater challenges, his life's calling has become an endless hunt of the most ferocious and dangerous game that each plane can offer. Let's pause here. Garrick claims to be at one with nature, often looking down upon civilization and preferring instead the laws of the wild. But predators in the wild don't hunt for the purposes of glory or domination through death. They hunt prey to feed and sustain themselves. Nothing more. Garrick has misinterpreted the reasons behind predators hunting their prey, and this right away demonstrates both a flaw in his core principles, as well as bringing into question just how much of a connection he truly has to nature. I do not have sympathy in regards to Garrick's motivation for being on Chandelar. He was there to hunt a creature that had done him no wrong, for no reason other than the thrill of killing another being. And this brings us to consequence. Garrick chased Liliana across the multiverse, finally catching her on the plane of Innistrad. Did he apologize for his previous attempt on her life? Did he beg her for mercy? Did he plead or otherwise bargain for the curse to be removed? Or even explain the direness of his plight? No. He immediately set upon her with yet another threat of obey me or die. And again, Liliana fought back in self-defense. And again, she defeated Garrick. And again, she spared his life. 
Now we come to the darkest consequence of Garrick's actions, who he takes his revenge upon. As the curse took hold of him, Garrick became more and more savage, more and more like the very animals that he hunted. He was not able to find and kill Liliana, so he equated all planeswalkers as being kin to her, and took his revenge out upon them. Garrick currently is traveling the multiverse, murdering any planeswalker he can. These walkers, these people, have done Garrick no harm, yet he takes their life. He even murders a walker by the name of Vranos, who was searching for Garrick for the purposes of bringing him to the Archangel Avacyn, so that he could be saved from the curse. That's right, a planeswalker tasked with saving Garrick is murdered in cold blood by Garrick. In the end, Liliana is a character defined by that which has been taken from her. In the current storyline, she seeks to slay the demons she sold her soul to, and this epitomizes her. She's fighting to regain herself. Her brother was taken from her, her life. The powers that her inner spark provided, gone. And then finally, her soul. She seeks to reclaim herself from those that would abuse her. In contrast, Garrick is a character defined by revenge and contradiction. In the current storyline, he murders innocents in the absence of the actual guilty party. The curse can indeed be blamed for bringing out this evil in Garrick, but it is an evil that has been there his entire life. He does not blame himself for the consequences of his actions, instead lashing out at those around him. He claims to be at one with nature, but nature does not seek revenge. In the end, my interpretation is that Garrick is a bully, a believer that might makes right, except when there are those mightier than himself. And that's why I am rooting for Liliana to win out in the end. But remember, this is not the deeper meaning of the conflict between Garrick and Liliana. It is only one deeper meaning. Disagree? Rooting instead for Garrick? Do you see this part of the storyline entirely differently? Well, be sure to let me know what your take is in the comments below. This bonus video has been brought to you by the generous contributions of patron alums at Patreon and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you.